Um, I've been here second time in 2011, now it's my third time. And really glad that I can come here uh, to Kyiv. Uh, the awesome thing about conferences in Ukraine is that something you probably won't find in any other country is that you get way more female developers coming to this conference. Uh, you don't get it in any other conference, any other country. Well, maybe may different conference, but not, uh, not, uh, not the software development. So, uh, I want to tell you about a girl I met uh, when I was uh, at primary school. Uh, I met a girl who was both intelligent and well-looking, uh, so really fell in love with each other. Her, uh, she was Amiga, and soon she introduced me to a uh, few of her friends. So I started coding in Pascal, I started coding in uh, BASIC. Uh, I find it I find it really cool to, to do the programming, uh, and I find that it's really great things to, for him to do. Uh, so I decided to go ahead, I choose the studies uh, when I could learn more engineering. So I did uh, some C, C++, some interesting languages you probably never heard of, like Ada. Anyone heard about the Ada? Oh, you do it. They do the same for you guys. Uh, Prolog and a few other languages. And uh, I found one interesting thing, that the if-then formulas work pretty well for the computers. So I was quite good on that, uh, so good that a few years after finishing the studies, I was promoted to become a manager and find one more interesting thing, that the if-then formulas doesn't work pretty well for people. The things that we can't tell a computer what to do doesn't mean that we can tell people what to do, which was interesting. So I have a look. I had a look that time at my 20 years of uh, education and noticed that, oh my God, I have no single education on how to cope with people. I have no idea how to be a manager, how to live with people. Uh, so basically, my skills were like you know uh, the same level of milking the cow, right? So I can do the presentation of both, managing people making the cow. So one of the things I learned then is that, uh, and this is kind of my first uh, leadership lesson I get, was that uh, learning is a journey. Now I hear myself from this, this place. So learning is a journey, so it's not that you finish your education after the studies, it's not that you finish your education uh, after primary or secondary school, you do this continuously. So I did that, I decided to go this way. I decided to switch from the, uh, from the guy that was just uh, programming into the someone who can uh, manage project. So I became the project manager, then I tried to become a coach, so I became the scrum master. I learn how to do that. I'm still learning how to do that. Uh, and basically this presentation is to show you what I have learned. So you might find that kind of obvious things I'm talking to you. That might be something you already know, but some of those items were really discovered for me. Uh, so right now I'm teaching, I'm helping companies. I'm, a, I'm working as an agile coach, I'm working as a, uh, as a trainer, I'm talking at the conferences, I'm Organizing these events, I'm uh, I'm a coordinator of the local agile group in Krakow, and I'm trying to have a fun as well with this. Uh, if you ask me how I'm doing with the project management, so I'm do good in driving changes or driving anything else, is that I can tell you now that I'm trying to drive anything I find. Anything I find. There is no Photoshop here. Uh, finally, the other thing I'm trying to, so the thing I'm trying to learn as well is, you know, working. Yeah, working in extreme condition, under high pressure, and doing incredible things. If you need anything, just ask me how to do this. I can share it. Okay. Anyway, coming back to the presentation. A uh, few questions. So, 
Who has received any software engineering education here? Awesome. The next question. Who has received any milking cow education here? Not just question. The next question. Who has noticed it's not a cow? Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> That was, that was also an interesting learning experiment for me. Uh, okay, who is a manager here? Okay, that, that be, well, might be the reason why you're on this presentation. Who has received any formal managerial education here? Yeah, a few hands, not bad. So, what do we do as managers? Anyone? Okay, what does manager do in your companies? I'm sorry. Once again, sorry. Important. Act important, looks important. Okay, that can be a reason. Okay, other things that manager do? Yell at people sometimes. Empower the people. Nice, because we're on the other conference, so we know the right answers. Unfortunately, most of the companies. Uh, no, either know that I write answers, but they don't follow those answers, or they d just don't know the answers. All right, uh, next question. Uh, think about now for a second how your manager structure looks like. It's something that way. So we have a CEO of the company, director of something, uh, manager of something, and we have a few people doing the testing, few people doing development, some architecture maybe, and some sales. We have something like that. Maybe something like that. None of this. A second one. Okay. Um, so the one thing I want to show you is how we came to some of the behavior we have right now in the manager. So something that you mentioned probably already, you know that we are fighting with some behaviors in the, in management. But I want to show the history. The reason I want to show the, the history is that we uh, usually can learn a lot of things from the history. So learn to understand how some of the behaviors came into the life. Okay. Uh, so very, very first idea from the history is a hero. The one who saved the world. Um, it can be any Egyptian, any Greek, any, uh, any Romanian, or any Ukrainian-specific hero. Basically, someone who come in, solve the problem, and live, right? We have this kind of mentality still in most of the companies. So we need to have a hero that come in, save our project, and leave. Yeah? You've seen those guys before? Yeah, yes, you've seen these guys before. So this is the mentality we have from our culture. 2,000 years of telling the myths about the superheroes who solved the problem. All right. So this is one thing we, we, we inherited from the culture. Second thing we have inherited from the culture. 1941 is a kind of important year for management. Uh, in that year, there was a train accident. Two trains hit each other. There were two people killed, 17 people injured. And uh, it was in the US. And the government decided to make an investigation and find out the reason uh, for that and find out the root cause and find a solution for that. So this guy, you know this guy? You should, because he made a very important document, which basically we rely upon now. So almost 200 years later. So this guy is named George Washington. But it's not the George Washington, but just, just the major George Washington Whistler. Uh, and he came with the report based on the, based on the, the discussion with the team he has. Report on avoiding collision and governing employees. Really important things because the, f the facts that are in this report are still in most of the companies we have right now. So what he found that we need to define the responsibility for each person. He introduced functional manager, 8041, guys. You don't know this report. Uh, we need to define regular reporting and lines of reporting. Again, something we probably know. Yeah, we've seen that before, right? We have this in companies, right? 
Just one person has their lines, lines manager in their company. Awesome. You guys are all independent, right? Uh, the tile uh, instruction on time tables, which may you not have in your companies, but the last one, no change could be made without writing permission. We know that. No change to requirements can be made without the written permission. No, we don't know. We haven't seen that before. Never ever. So this structure comes into the picture almost 200 years ago as a result of this document. Uh, there's another guy you might not know either, Daniel McCallum. He was the president of another railroad company, and he created uh, six principles of administration, and he brought first one. Basically, we need to split the, d divide the responsibilities. Pretty simple one. Uh, second, if we have responsibilities, then we need to have our authority. We know that, right? Next one. Uh, we, know, we need to know if people follow their responsibilities. We've seen this. We see this in our company, right? Next one. Uh, we, meet, we must make sure that if anyone fail on his duties, we need to find out and correct this one. So now we create a system, and the goal of the system is to make sure that any time anyone fails on his duties, we need to correct this one. So the system is perfect, and we need just to find the people who are wrong in the system and get rid of the wrong. Really awesome. So you guys have a mentality in the company, I mean those guys, but we still have the same, right? We have a mentality that if anything wrong happened, this is because someone screw up. There's nothing wrong around company, just people do screw up sometimes, something. Okay, how are we doing for a time? Uh, pretty good, okay. Next thing, pretty cool one. Uh, those information should not embarrass or lessen the influence of your manager. We've seen this in, the in, the, in your organization, we should not provide the information the, about the product or about the project in the way that your manager feels embarrassed. Awesome. Really good. Finally, the system is designed this way that we find out who is guilty and punish this person. Really awesome. So we start from the top of the organization, at the top of the structure, and we go down below to find the guy who is guilty. Again, this is half of the 19th century, this is mentality that provides in our system. The next guy who add another brick to this idea is this guy. You know that? You know this guy? Frederick Tyler, a father of scientific manager, management, sorry. And the thing he said, we need to enforce process on people so they follow the rules to be effective. And now we know what the managers do. Managers are enforcing. So they are defining the process and enforcing this process on people. Again, movie that we see too much often in our companies, right? We have manager who has mind and you have stupid people who do the job, right? Awesome. This guy, who know this guy? Mr. Ford, right. So this guy created a, created a factory uh, when the Ford T was created. And he has a bunch of people coming from different countries. When you would go to his uh, factory in 1915, you would get like 50 different languages spoken along the factory line. So in most cases, people on the left couldn't communicate with the people on the right in the same languages. They can't hardly speak English. So what he did, he divided work to very small pieces, mostly meaningless pieces, like just putting the wheel on the right place, whatever, something simple. And people have no idea why they are doing this, but they have a very simple task. What Henry Ford was saying is that I just need to have a hands. 
Unfortunately, there's also some people going with these hands. Um, so, if you look at this, there's something we came up uh, after 200 years or after 100 years. Uh, Henrik IV was 2015 in his factory. And we are in the same place with often, often in our components. Um, so, so again, so we will think about this. If you think about how we can change it, if you think about the, what is the value, where's the value? If you look at the uh, at our uh, structure of the organization, you think about who is working here, who is adding a value here. Where are those guys? Bottom. At the bottom, right? So, the idea about the the idea about the changing the structure, putting the guys at that are at the bottom at the top of the organization is very, very revolutionary for a lot of organizations. It's against what we think. It's against what we are used to. Hero should be at the bottom of, our, of the organization. No, he should be on the top, right? Those guys are important? No, those guys are important. Those guys are longer in the company. They are more important. But the thing is that the manager do not add value. There is no single line of code mostly done by the managers, right? unless they play the developers and the manager at the same time. But manager do not add value for your customer. So if you start thinking about this, those guys are important. Now we start questioning what those guys are for. What the hell they should be doing here? And here we come to the idea of the servant leadership. Those guys should be helping the team to solve the problem deliver value. So my definition of level, uh, leadership is to achieve a common goal. So it's not uh, making other people, it's not that I force you to, do the, to achieve that, it's not my goal, it's not about achieving my goal, it's achieving our goal, and I'm helping you to do, do that. That's my definition of leadership. And I tried to find out what are the elements what are the parts of uh, leadership? There are different practices, but I try to combine them into the three principles. So more think about this more like a, like a goals, ideas that you can focus on. So they are kind of interdependent. Uh, high level, I would try to get a little bit into each of them and give you some more examples on that. Uh, okay, the very first one. So, uh, let's do a simple exercise. I want you guys to stand up for a second. It's a stand-up conference anyway. <laughs> you too. I know you have a laptop. Uh, th that's more difficult. Uh, now guys, uh, look at me and I want you guys to raise your hand high above your head. Now, those guys that have a hand like here, ask the guys next to you what I have told you. What did I tell you? About the head, yeah, about the, about the, about the head, right. Um, so there's, you can sit down for a second. Uh, there, is a, there, is a, uh, there is a proverb, uh, words, uh, uh, words uh, teach uh, these uh, leads, right? So, so, I mean, you can talk a lot as a leader, but before you start showing desired behaviors yourself, there is no chance that your company is going to change, and nothing is going to change. If anyone has a kids, they really know that. No matter what you told their kids, they're going to copy your behavior. They're going to mimic your behavior. And that's a disaster for the parents. I know that. Self-experience. Self, self so first, if you want to have some behavior, show them. Next thing is that uh, the fact that we spend like last 20 or 30 or 40 years with us doesn't mean that we understand ourselves. So next thing is to try to understand what are your drivers, what motivates you, what is important for you, what are the, your strong skills, what are your weakness, right? Try to think about yourself before helping others, before trying to solve your, solve your problems, company problems, try to understand yourself. And 
then develop yourself. Rather, focus on your skills, rather focus on your talents, the things that they are strong in you, rather than trying to fix everything that you think that sucks in, sucks in your case, right? So focus on the thing that you think you're great and make more of them. Try to, instead of fixing the problems you have, instead of fixing that, that there are some things that you are missing, try to improve the items that you're great on. Um, remember about this, the leadership is a skill you need to learn. I'm pretty sure that there are some people who just born with the Java programming abilities. And uh, probably there are some people who are just born with the leadership abilities. Most people don't, and if you don't practice that, there is no chance you will be good on that. Um, so when you're working on yourself, then you can start working with, uh, working with other people. The thing is that uh, we're not managing people, we're leading people, we're helping them solve the problems, like you said, we are, we are empowering them. We can manage things. So it's not about we, we cannot manage anymore because we are agile. We still manage. We manage project, we manage product, we manage risk, we manage plenty of things. You don't just manage people. So there is a difference between leadership and management, and every organization needs both. Most organizations have too much management and not enough leadership. But sometimes on the agile wave, we get too much leadership and not enough management in some companies. Uh, next point you need to work on is to try to understand others. So instead of assuming that you guys are the same as I, uh, if I'm working with you as, a, as my team, I'm trying to understand what is motivating you, what is important in, uh, for you. What kind of skills you have, what kind of talents, how you want to develop. If you have a team of five, six people, have a one-on-one -on -one with each, each of the person, and not one per year, but one per, mo per month, one per week, just have a quick conversation with those people, understand what is behind them, what kind of problems they have. Before you start helping them, try to understand what are the real problems. So try to understand them. The next thing is that you need to have a basic, simple assumption. If I'm okay, you're okay. So, if I don't need to be motivated by my manager, how many of you need to be motivated, by the way? Oh yeah, we have. You need to be motivated, really, guys? You need your manager, manager to motivate you? Okay. I'm learning something new here. That's my learning progress as well. So, Okay. You know, like when um, I'm told that, wow, things are so great, I expect them to be really great, and this is the source of motivation. Okay, but you're saying that you motivate yourself, or but not being motivated by someone else. So, sorry, I, I rephrase the question, who need to be motivated by your manager? No. You still have one guy, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, that's, that's another thing that mod, the, uh, the, the, mod, uh, the manager do. They do. Mostly they do remove the demotivators. That's the work the, uh, the manager do. They cannot motivate you mostly, but they can easily demotivate you, right? So their goal is to, de to remove the demotivators, which are different from the motivators. Because demotivators are usually external, motivators are usually internal. So if I assume that I don't need to have a motivation, then I need, don't need to motivate my team as well, right? I assume that there are adults. That's a strong assumption in IT, I know. But yeah, I assume that the God, those guys are adults. They are experts. They're capable of doing the, the, the job, right? And this came to the next point is that we're doing for time. We're doing great. The next point is that you need to let people do the best they, they can. So again, we know that we're working with experts, and your job is to remove the impediments, remove everything that blocks people from doing their job. Last but not least, when working with people, you need to network. I noticed that this is something really seldom stress out either during the events, conferences, or even, the, even during the uh, 
when you try to get a new job, right? Whoever came to the whoever came to the uh, review doing the job, uh, trying to get a job, and were, was asked about your network, or maybe during your yearly review of your progress, who was asked? Who of you was asked if you get new connection during that year? Anyone? You were asked, so, and so who has, maybe, maybe ask it differently because I, I see the confusion in your Okay. Uh, who has a yearly review, kind of performance review in the organization? Oh, yeah, some of the people. Okay. Who of you guys, uh, keep your hand up because I need to know, see how, how many hands go up, down. Uh, how, how many of you were asked during your last performance review about your new connection you made in your business? Keep your hand up. Okay. Okay, that's that's my. Oh, there was one person there, and we need a picture of this guy. <laughs> All right, so the networking is. I mean, you don't need to know everything. You don't. You just need to know the people who know the, the, these things, right? So one of the things that is not being perceived yet in our industry is to who I know, who I need to go to ask the question. And this conference is a great place to meet people who know the answers. So instead of you finding out the answer again, you trying to reinvent the wheel, you will go to some people who are here and ask them the question, either by email or whatever other means. So my suggestion for this point is that you should not leave this conference at least without the five new people you met and you make a connection with. It's not just LinkedIn or business cards exchange is more like a creating a connection, knowing what they are good at, how they can how they can help you develop yourself. Okay, so two points: first, work on yourself, then wor work on co cooperating with other people. Finally, is stop improving the process. Try to improve the system. So anyone at this group has ever convinced your grandma that you don't want to have another uh, supper or another meat or whatever? Anyone here? You really did con convince your grandma that you don't want more? <laughs> you, ju you just, oh yeah, we have one person. Awesome. Awesome. You go, you go to marketing now. <laughs> you were saying? Oh, that's that's that, that's but not that's not convincing. And you, ju you just you just yeah, you just fix the problem. Okay, so you just escape. So we just don't want to be changed, right? Again, it's about this uh, "I'm okay, you're okay" syndrome. So if I don't want to be a change, why should I change you, right? Stop changing people. Stop thinking, yeah, I need to change those people. Oh my god, those guys are so stupid. I need to change them. Oh my god. This is the this is something we always find in the in any conflict is I know what's your problem. I know I will tell you what's your problem. I know how you can fix it. I can tell you how you can fix your problem because the problem is on your side always. That's amazing. Not only in job, in your marriage as well. Yeah, I know that's your problem. And I can tell you what you need to do to solve the problem in mar our marriage. Awesome approach. And what if someone is like negative what, you, what do you mean by that? So like criticizing? So I would say two things. First of all, Coming back to that people differ, so some people just focus on different items, and sometimes you don't want to have a fully horror optimistic team because you may not notice when you get too deep into the shit by that, right? You will see that, whoa, <laughs> now it's a problem. So we need sometimes those kind of people, right? If we are demotivating, then just start asking why this guy is motivating. So Try to talk with this guy, and again, we treat those guys as the people. He's okay, I'm okay. So, what do you think happens when you say something on that about about this uh, project, or say something like that on the team forum? What do you think? What is the reaction of the team? How do you perceive that? So, try to talk and understand what is the reason. Maybe they are scared about the change. Maybe 
they don't feel secure, or maybe it's just your kind of, you know, they behavior, so they want to be a kind of star, again, the hero. So I'm playing, the, I'm playing always the, 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 the guy who is making a comments. I've seen a picture today that the output of the programmer is uh, some code and, uh, and the sarcasm as well. It's a side effect for, for, for programmers. Uh, so you need to understand this, per this specific person, work with this person, find out the reason for that, right? You are not supposed to change him. It's his decision if he wants to go, right? There is a, you know how many psychologists you need to change the, Bible, uh, the bulb in the, in, the, in the selling? Just one, but the bulb need to want to change, <laughs> right? So again, you cannot force people to change. They need they're just, they're cautious decision that if they want or not. Yes. I mean, you can, in, you can invite, show him the options, show, show him the consequences, but again, I treat them as adults and I make him the decision. Even sometimes you might say, you know, those are the consequences. If you are not the team player, if you don't want to play according to our room, rules, if you don't want to follow our values, for example, you are cheating, it happens, right? Our people are cheating, right? So those are our values and those are your values. So if you don't like our values, then you, we cannot work together. But again, we play this as adults. I'm telling you the consequences of your deeds and it's your decision if you want to either play with us or you go to the another sandbox, right? It's your decision again. But you're not changing people in the meaning that don't force people to change. And again, as like Craig said today, change the environment. So change the system around them. We, uh, I will be talking more, a little more about this tomorrow during the, during the bureau game simulation. So we'll be more talking about the system, how the system uh, force the, some of the behavior of people. So if you want to hear more about the uh, systems, come tomorrow for the workshop. It's three hours workshop, I know, but it's a really fun game. And uh, we'll be, you know, delivering beer mostly. <laughs> but we'll be talking also about so, some consequences of that, uh, of the system, not of the beer, which might be another discussion today. Uh, okay, next thing I noticed uh, for the leader is to create a vision. So. Uh, try to show people the goal. It is something I find leaders are important on showing, enabling people to go in the one, one direction, but also showing which are our common goal, where are our, com our common goal. So, which came to the another another idea I came upon for after a while is that the perfection is uh, a goal. So something you go into direction, but not a state. You never ever reach the perfection, right? So you always rise a bar a little bit for people. It still needs to be a realistic. So you don't go to the team. You have a velocity of 20. Now you need to have a 40 tomorrow, right? That's not a that's not a realistic, right? But we can help people to achieve the better goals. Um, next one. Uh, don't embrace the status quo. So. Again, uh, kind of, it's really interesting because I prepared the slide before Craig was uh, today on the, on the, on the, on the, yeah, I did. <laughs> I, I did cre create the slide uh, two years ago, so I, I, I have a, I have a, I have a right to use this one. Okay, anyway, uh, Howard Mark Sch Schultz. Anyone heard about this guy? He's a, he's a chief of the uh, company that uh, employs something like, 200,000 people, never heard about this guy? He's the boss of the Starbucks. You heard about the Starbucks? Yeah. So he's the boss of the company that is around the group. By the way, you don't have a Starbucks in Kyiv, do you? Crap, I need, to have a, I need to have a Mac for my wife, but not yet. Okay, um, she's collecting one. Anyway, so he created a company that is around the globe and still the guys is always, th this guy is always looking how to improve his company. So one day he came up into the shop, uh, the coffee shop, it's a kind of uh, small coffee shop in, a, I think it was in New York, and he noticed the uh, new fancy coffee machine. He asked what's that, he asked how it works, and so he has a nice conversation, and then he returned to the, uh, to the office and asked to buy. So they buy the whole company making those coffee machines. And now you can get those coffee machines only in Starbucks. So he's not just 
he's not just telling people what to do, but he's also looking for the uh, for the change himself, right? He go uh, look for the what does the competitor do? How many CEO do that? How many CEO go and try what are the different products of the of our companies or of our competition competitors, right? Uh, next thing, I'm still doing fine uh, with time. Uh, next thing is to experiment, right? Again. Uh, you know why the genetic uh, uh, physics uh, don't work with the elephants, they work with the flies? So, how do you name it? Gene genetic uh, engineers. Oh, this is how it is. So, they work with fl flies, don't work with the elephants. Why is that? Size? Size? Sorry? Time delay, yes. It's usually faster to get the feedback using flies than the, than the elephants, mostly, right? And again, so it's not that we don't experiment, it's a question on how often you can run another experiment, right? How many, we had a, this, this nice discussion yesterday on how many experiments you have, should have during one iteration, right? How many experiments you should do at once. Uh, again, uh, again, this slide was before Craig Lerman's presentation. I, don't, I know you don't believe me. Uh, so observe Gemba. Gemba is the working place. So instead of trying to find out what is happening in your organization looking at the Excel, go and see. So find out what are the root causes. Find out the reason. So go and see what is happening. It's way easier to do this in manufacturing because it's way easier to see part of the car it's more difficult to do this in software. That's why we work so much on the visual management, right? So that's why we try to put so many information on the walls because there's no other way to know what is happening. And a creator of, a creator of a Toyota system, Tachiono, said that data is really important, but I do care more about the facts. So. To Tachi Ono was not taking care much about the process or whatever was written down. He was looking on what is happening, what people are really doing, how they behave. So Tachi Ono was uh, famous for the on Ono cycles. So what he did, he take one of the engineers, he drew a circle on the, on the ground in the, in the factory, and he said, you stay here. And he leaves. So the guy was like, four hours later, Tachiona comes back and what you just notice? So, you know, we have a flow of the materials from here to here, then we are screwing some screw here, and then let's go. Uh huh, okay. And the Tachiona leaves again, right? Coming again after four hours, he asks, What did you notice? You know what? Those guys are taking this heavy stuff. In from transporting this from this, this point to that point. So if you move those two machines close together, we don't need to waste so much time on transporting. And these guys seem to be left-handed, but he has a box with all the, all the supplies on his right hand. So we move the box on, the on his left hand. Then he can do this quickly because he don't need to do this way, right? Like kind of dance for him, right? So when you start observing what is really happening, then you notice how you can help people, right? You don't get this from Excel, never, ever. Five minutes and final observation. I'm on track. Uh, so I give you a lot of ideas what you need to try. Uh, and it can be a little, oh my god, I want to be developer again. I don't want to be a leader now. Uh, the good thing is that you're not supposed to do everything at once. The, your job is to make sure that the leadership happens. So what I would like you guys to do now, before I finish the presentation, think about from all these items I told you, so different ideas, pick one which you think you can implement in less than three, three months from now. Think about it for a second. Just one. We done? Yes, no? No, we haven't changed this. Okay, we done? All right. Now, pick a person 
maybe someone sitting next to you, maybe someone you know, friend of you, husband, whoever, who will be responsible for making sure that, that you will get there, right? Think about that person. All right, now your goal today is to tell that person that what you're trying to do and that you're trying to achieve this in three months from now. Okay? And she or he is responsible for making sure that you get there in three months from now. Sounds good? All right. Um, that's it with my presentation. So, большое um, спасибо. Yeah, I'm going to upload those slides. So, I this, again, this is the presentation I did uh, for, for the first time two years ago. And looking at the slide, I, I decided to make a little tweaks on that. So, I'm going to update this presentation and upload it to the Procognita website. Um, okay, questions? Let's start from. Yeah. So previously you was a developer. Yeah. So so I tried different skills from the developers, uh, quality engineer in the meaning of the quality, not the testing, uh, project manager, scrum master, so different one. Yeah. And and now you are more like a manager. Well, now I'm working more like a coach, some or the consultant. So I'm trying to help organization their change. And what I notice more and more often is that it's not about the uh, products, tools we use, but it's about the mentality, right? So about the, how we think about some items, right? That's what. And my question is that uh, w how to combine, you know, the, the the management and the the development, because, because I, I I was also was a developer previously, mm -hmm. and now I'm a manager, and then I miss development, and you know, like a monkey. Um. I would say if you give me the code now, then I would probably screw it up. So, not sure if I can answer the question. Uh, I would ask the different question. Uh, of those two items, is there something you would like to do more of those two? Le leadership, I mean, management and, uh, and the development, is there something you want to do more? Or is it something you do just because you are asked to? All right, so you want to do both, right? Um, okay. I'm new in management, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure that this is my area for my future. Okay. So, and I'm in stage of missing development, the previous life, and you know, so. Okay. So, I mean, I can either share the pain with you or the other thing I can share with you is the idea uh, I have is that uh, you can treat this as experiment. So give it your kind of fixed date, like end of this year. And by the December, you will make the decision if which, go you, which way you go, right? If you lost uh, you know, nine months and you find out that management is not for you, then you still can code, probably. You, maybe you need to learn something new, but you also get a huge knowledge about uh, how you feel as a manager, right? So you can make a decision. You don't need to make all the decisions now, right? It's not that you close the doors for development when becoming the manager. And make sure that your organization understands that, that you can come back as a, as a developer one day. Does that answer the question? Not really. Mm -hmm. I think that it's possible to combine it. Okay. Um, we're recording, so I'm not going to give you a one uh, cent. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to say it politely because we're recording this now. now. There, is a, there is a Polish saying that you cannot go on your serve to several buzzer at once. So, and this is something I, I find I find a kind of uh, uh, really interesting because when people try to do several things at once, you mostly fail on all of them, right? And this was my conscious decision that I am not coding anymore. I would like to still because it was fun, but I know that, uh, for example, what I'm doing now is more fun. So, 
probably you can, and probably some people uh, some people believe that you can combine those two items, and probably that makes sense for some people. But for me, that would be just too too much. So I cannot answer this question probably for you. Zero. Okay, so one more question or. You touched on the subject of uh, kind of getting people to change. I uh, suppose that's the context of developers, and you'd like them to some sometimes maybe be more responsible or to multitask or, or to. You never ask people to multitask. Believe me, never. One of the ways, sorry, just to, just to finish, just to explain the situation. One of the ways, the biggest ways we have in a software development is multitasking. We spend so much time on context switching that you'd better go for vacation, return, do one task, do second task, still you'll be faster than trying to do them in the same time, sorry. Okay, let's put okay. this dialogue aside. Uh, how, would you, how would you separate from the people who you think can change and you should entice them to? from those that are hopeless or maybe you shouldn't even get them to, you know? Uh, again, uh, remember the slide, I'm okay, you're okay. Most cases, most, com I mean, it's really hard and it's again, it's even really hard, hard when I know that uh, I'm okay, you're okay, it's really hard for me to remember this one. So every time you think about, yeah, how can I convince those guys, how can I distinguish between those, those hopeless guys that will want to change? Any time, check if the assumption I'm okay, you're okay is still in place. When I'm hearing those are guys that want to change, is that something wrong with those guys, right? So this is what I'm hearing. You might think about the differences, so, so this might be wrong understanding what, what you are saying. But too many times we're giving assumption that must be something wrong with other people, right? Uh, if I'm okay, you're okay, we don't need to compare about against the other. You can have a different skill than I do. Right? I don't need to compare to other speakers here because I know that I sucks here, right? So I don't need to compare on this, uh, to other speakers to, on this conference to know that I'm the best one, right? Because this is, again, I'm, not, I'm okay, you're not okay. Uh, but often companies have a different uh, management practices of different polities, right? Saying you're not okay. Think about the rules you have in your company. How many of them tell something wrong with you guys you need to behave. Management doesn't need to, but you need to behave. We have different policies for different behavior. Uh, when you're going abroad, you have a limit for the spendings because you are not okay, you can spend too much. Right? What happens usually with this case? Right? People spend, if you have a limit of 100, then how much you are going to spend? Yeah, 99 usually, right? <laughs> right. If you tell people with your policies that they are not okay, then they will start to, to beat the system, right? So, just to answer the question, I will give, I will give them uh, the option, right? So, I will give, tell them, what are your, this is what I see as your option. Maybe there are more than that. And this is your decision. Even the firing decision, firing someone from the team, should usually be the, per the decision of that person, right? Because he don't want to, he make a cautious decision of not adopting to what we expect for the, for the members of our company. You're basically saying make, make the employee or make the person uh, realize that he's making the change. Yes. Him. Yes. And he may decide not, right? Taking the consequences that are here. Okay, I guess we're done with the presentation. Some people want to, ha want to eat lunch. Uh, so if there are any other questions, then I'm here today and tomorrow can answer the question. All right, thanks you guys.